All right, so here's a quick overview of the free template I gave away in the blog post. Now this does assume you have some working knowledge of Storyline. Um, I'm going to kind of explain how it's set up and then how you can add your own content to that. But uh, you'll need to deconstruct the file. A couple things. I gave you this template here and then I believe there's a second uh, slide on here. Let's see here it is. Yeah, here's the second slide. And then there's nothing tied to it. But I kind of like the bigger view here. So I create a second slider uh, for you. But we're going to look at this one. So the way this works is you start the interaction. It comes to this layer that these are your instructions. I have a little interaction to kind of get you to do what you're going to do in the rest of the interaction. So you're going to do that. This jumps to a new layer. At this point, you know, you could use it for navigation or whatever you want to do. This could be backwards, forwards, it could be a sorting activity. It really doesn't matter. Uh, in this case, uh, whenever, well, what happens is the layer loads, this content animates in, and then it pauses after the entrance animation. And there's also an exit animation, but it can't be triggered because the timeline's paused. So when I do one of these decisions here, that's going to, uh, there's a trigger there then to resume the timeline. So it's going to, you're going to see it's going to exit off. And once it's exit, exits off, it's going to go to the next layer. So this is layer one. We do this resume timeline, it exits off, it goes to layer two. Layer two, resume timeline goes to layer three, layer four. You'll notice how the mouse always resets because you don't want it to start over here. One is it may just auto advance, but you want it to start back in the center. So I'll show you how that's set up and then you can, you know, retry it or do whatever you want to. All right, so let's look at how this is set up. So uh, this this is our main slider here. And you can like uh, let's click on the slider here. Um, so this is our slider. Like all sliders, you can go to the design or format tabs, right? The design tab is going to show you what variable it's set up to. So that's the sort variable. And so that's how we're tracking uh, whether to advance. So this slider is only using three numbers. So it's one, two, and three. Two is going to be the middle point, And then one is to this way and three is this way. So we're always going one, two, three. And to make it smoother, instead of jumping from one to two, I added steps of 0 0.01. So this way it has a real smooth uh, transition. Otherwise you're, going to, otherwise you're going to go from two and it's just going to jump right to one or just jump right to three. So with the 0 0.01, it's going to allow it to have a smooth um, movement. Um, so, so you can do that if you want to. All right, so we've got that slider. So basically what happens is, when the slide first launches, it goes to our start screen. So as you can see, show layer start. So it's come to the start screen. At the start screen, I've got this stuff. It's instructions. I've got a slider here. This is our starter slider. And that you could see the variables called get started. So I'm going to move this here. And that lets the learner practice the activity you want them to do. And you could see it says, um, when you first launch the slide or this layer, it's going to set this to one. Now this is only using two, so it's one and two. And so two is going to come over here. When it's set to 1.88, I just give it a little bit of flex because when you move a slider, some people may not move it all the way to two. So if you notice up here, when I'm moving the slider, I can kind of see, and, and at this point I might want to trigger it, and then you can see that's 1.87. So anything between 1.88 and 2, it's going to uh, trigger that. So you can see it's just going to say show layer 1. So move it here. It's going to come to layer 1. Now one thing I'll point out too, oops. One thing I'll point out too is whenever this layer loads up, I want it to go back to 1 because when I leave this, this, is, this variable is still always going to be at 2. So the next time I come back, I want to make sure that this is set to 1 so it resets it. So we go to layer 1. Now layer one, the way it's set up, layer one, two, three, four, five, they're all the same. The way it's set up is this content here, you can see it's going to animate in at 0.25 seconds, and it's going to animate out at 0.25 seconds. So that's half a second, right? 0 0.25, 0 0.25 is 0 0.50. Um, we look at the timeline, that's going to go here. That's a half a second right here. We don't want to pause it at half. We don't want the timeline to only be half a second. So we stretch the timeline out. You can see it's point, about 0.75 seconds. So what's going to happen is 
this content, when this, this layer loads, this is going to animate in. And then we have a trigger that says pause the timeline when the entrance animation completes. So when this entrance animation completes, it's going to stop the timeline. Now we can still do the slider. So now we have a slider. And what we want to do is we want to resume the timeline when the slider changes. So that variable, the sort variable, which is what we have on this slider here, right? Oops, the slider here. If we look at it, it's the sort variable, right? So when this slider moves one way or the other, um, what we want to do is resume the timeline. So when it moves this way, we're going to resume the timeline. And when it moves this way, we're going to resume the timeline. So you can see that's what happens. When the timeline resumes, that's going to start this up here. So it's stopping at about the halfway point, right? Uh, when the timeline resumes, it's going to um, animate. It's the timeline's going to resume. It gets to the end, it's going to trigger the exit animation. So the exit animation is going to active activate. And then after the exit animation, um, what we have is, where is it at here? Resume timeline, resume timeline. The exit animation, uh, the, we have something that says show layer 2 when the timeline ends. And so that's going to show layer 2. And it's going to come over here. And then it's going to repeat that process. Uh, and then you can see if I wanted to add, like right now I'm going to layer 5. Let's say I wanted to have a sixth layer. I would just go ahead and duplicate this. So we'll duplicate it. We'll put this, we'll call this 6. Right. So we're going to go to 5. We want 5 right here. If we look at it, we want 5 to jump, show layer 6 when the timeline ends and then it gets to layer 6. And if layer 6, we want to say show layer finish since that's the last one when the timeline ends. Uh, so that's how that would work. So pretty straightforward when you go in here. What's nice about this is uh, you can learn how to customize a slider, right, and work with the sliders. And you can do whatever you want to. You can do sorting activity. You can use it for navigation. You can collect other information. Uh, but you're working with a custom slider. You're learning to pause the timeline and resume the timeline based on a trigger. And then you're also working a little bit with variables. So hopefully you can use this. And um, I look forward to seeing something. And if you want to, you can always use this bigger version. Now this one I don't have any layers or anything tied to it. But you've got uh, this this the slider here you can you can work with and then you have more room so hopefully you can use those